Welcome to the first ever episode of Science with Savannah, age 7. I'm her co-host, Moxie Labouche, and we're just thrilled that you're here today. Please pardon some growing pains in terms of the audio quality. We'll get all of that ironed out soon. In the meantime, enjoy the show, and we hope you learn something. Pop quiz. How fast can a dolphin exhale? 5 miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour. Stay tuned for the end of the video. Welcome back to Science with Savannah, age 7. On today's episode, how do animals breathe? Breathing is the act of taking in the air you need and pushing out the air you don't. That's right. For animal life on Earth, this means getting oxygen into our bodies, which we all need to live, and getting rid of carbon dioxide. It's similar to how we eat food for energy. And then we poop it out. Essentially, yes. Uh, but thankfully, it smells a little better. There are four types of gas exchanges. Integumentary exchange. That means through the skin. Mm -hmm. Gills. For breathing underwater. Tracheal systems. This isn't the tracheal like in your throat. This is how insects breathe. Yeah. And finally, lungs, which are found in land animals. Let's get those out of the way first, because I think people know more about them. Lungs come in all shapes and sizes, but they work the same as ours. Humans have a pair of lungs in our chest, one on the left side and one on the right, protected by the rib cage. A tube called the trachea connects the lungs to the mouth and nose. Mm -hmm. Inside the lungs, the trachea branches off into bronchi, which branch off into bronchioles. For people with asthma and other conditions like me, these tubes can swell up and it gets hard to get air into your lungs. There's also a wide muscle underneath the lungs called the diaphragm. When your body needs more oxygen, the brain signals the diaphragm to move downwards, which expands your lungs to draw in air. Our bodies are made up of lots of tiny cells. An adult can have 37 trillion, that's 37 and 12 zeros. All those cells need oxygen to do their jobs. When you breathe in, the air goes into your lungs. To the alveoli. This is where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. Tiny blood vessels called capillaries run next to the alveoli. As the heart pumps blood past the alveoli, red blood cells pick up oxygen and drop off carbon dioxide, the waste product created by doing anything. These red blood cells carry the oxygen to every cell in the body, giving them the oxygen they need and taking away the carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. This happens every time you breathe, all day. All day, yep. Yeah. It's easy for us to breathe oxygen out of the air, but what about animals that live underwater? They can't all come to the surface for air like whales do. That's why fish have gills. The tissue in gills is very thin, just one cell thick. It's so thin, the gases in the water can move through them. Because gills are so thin, they're protected by a flap called the operculum. The fish opens and closes the flap by opening and closing its mouth. Water is forced through the gills and then out the back of the operculum. There are capillaries in the gills, just like in our lungs, so the oxygen can be taken from the water into the animal's blood, and CO2 can diffuse through the cells of the gill and back out into the water. Then the blood moves through their bodies like it does in animals with lungs. Most animals with gills are fish, mm -hmm. but you can also find gills on hermit crabs, axolotls, tadpoles, and even pill bugs. They're crustaceans, like lobsters. That's why they like to live under rocks on the ground where it's nice and damp. Mm -hmm. Now things get a little differenty. Some insects have air tubes going through their exoskeleton that open to the outside world. They're called trachea, like the tube in your throat, and the holes that open up to the outside are called spiracles. Insects don't have blood the same way we do. Instead of oxygen coming in one place and being carried through the body by blood, the spiracles mm -hmm. are all over the body, so there are tracheal tubes going into all of the tissue. That's right. 
This tracheal system actually limits the size an insect can be. The bigger the bugs, the more oxygen they need. It means they would need longer tracheae. Without lungs to pull the air in, the air won't move down long tubes on its own, the same way it would down a little short tube. The last kind of animal breathes through its skin, but in a different way. The integument is the skin of an animal. Very small animals like worms that live in moist places breathe through their skin, called integumental exchange. Like the other three types of breathing, earthworms have capillaries just under their skin. As the worms move through the soil, they create air pockets. The worms take in oxygen from the air pockets and release carbon dioxide right through their outer surface. Air dissolves in the mucus of their skin, so to be able to exchange gases, earthworms have to stay moist. Moist. But if they are in too much water, they will eventually drown because they don't have gills to get oxygen from the water. This is a broad overview, but there are always special cases. Take birds, for example. They have lungs like land mammals, but they also have extra bits and pieces. Birds have air sacs in their body to help them get the most out of the air they breathe. Air gets pulled into the lungs as usual, but when they exhale, they push the air from their lungs into the two air sacs in their abdomen. These sacs are lined with blood vessels to absorb more oxygen. The air then moves into a second set of air sacs in the chest and neck. It's almost like birds have three sets of lungs. Air makes a big circle in a bird's body, unlike the U-turn it makes in ours. That's why smoke and other aerosols are really dangerous for birds. For us, air goes in and out the same way, which means tainted air can be expelled from our lungs easily. For birds, it's almost impossible. Birds can cough, but coughing will really only clear their throat or nostrils. That's why pneumonia, or any other fluid buildup, can kill a bird. They just can't cough it up. Not every animal breathes through their faces. Some animals breathe through their butt. Certain kinds of turtles breathe through their mouth and their cloaca, which is the opening they use to pee, poop, and lay eggs. When a turtle hibernates, it buries itself in cold water for up to five months. To survive, it has to change a lot of things about the way its body works. Some processes, like getting energy from burning fat, become anaerobic, meaning they work without oxygen. Without ribs that expand and contract, the turtle has muscles that pull the body toward the openings of the shell to allow it to inhale, and more muscles to squish the turtle's guts against its lungs to make it exhale. The combination makes for a lot of work, and that costs the turtle a lot of calories. Since the turtle is hibernating and not getting up to eat, it needs to breathe in a way that uses less energy. That's where butt breathing comes in. Sacs next to the cloaca are lined up with blood vessels. Oxygen enters these blood vessels and the sacs are squeezed to move the blood out. The turtle is asleep and he is not embarrassed. There are also land animals that can breathe underwater. Herpetologists, or scientists who study reptiles, have found the river anole lizard in Costa Rica is able to hide from predators underwater for up to 15 minutes at a time. Scientists film a lizard underwater and saw a tiny bubble inflating and deflating at the top of her head. The lizard seemed to be recycling her air like a scuba diver breathing through a tank. Some kinds of spiders and beetles do this too, but the river anole is the first reptile that scientists have observed, and they aren't really sure how it does it. Now it's time for the fact fire. Your right lung is bigger than your left lung, with three lobes instead of two, because your left lung needs to share space with your heart. Your lungs are the only organ that will float in water, since they have air in them, like a beach ball. The ancient Egyptians had a hieroglyph of lungs attached to a windpipe 
to symbolize the unity between Upper and Lower Egypt. Horses only breathe through their noses. The world record for a person holding their breath is 22 minutes and 22 seconds, achieved by a German freediver. At rest, humans exhale. 17.5 milliliters, or 0.59 ounces, of water per hour. You lose about four times that amount if you're exercising, though. The answer to today's pop quiz question, how fast can a dolphin exhale? A dolphin can exhale at or over 100 miles per hour. So, Savannah? What sorts of things did we teach the people today? That some animals have gills and some animals have lungs. There's also the integumentary exchange. What was the fourth one? There was lungs, gills, the integumentary, and the tracheal system. What other science questions are on your mind? How many moons does each planet have? That's a really good question. Maybe we'll answer that next time on Science with Savannah, age 7.